The final C, confidence. How do you not only boost employee morale, but also instill enough confidence in individuals and in teams to be able to bounce back from failures and setback? Joining us for this conversation is Ajay Rawal, General Manager Marketing, Raymond's Consumer Care. Ajay, welcome. Thank you very much, Mandira. You're a very confident person. We've got the right person here. <laughs> so kind this. of you, so kind of you. Okay, so Ravi, how do you build confidence, firstly in individuals, and then we talk about teams? Is making them believe, you know, why they have reached a certain level and why they should not change just for the sake of changing, you know, just because they have reached that level. Because those are, you know, skills, traits that have been ingrained from a very young age. And I have always believed to be fearless, you must back your instincts. Back your instincts to the hill. You know, therein comes self-confidence that can bring you back on track and be the driving force you can be. And as, no far, as, as far as the team is concerned, the team is a collective, how do you build confidence of a team? It's same, put collectively, saying that each one has his own traits and never forget your strengths and in-depth knowledge about your opposition study the opposition but do not back off from your strengths if you as 11 and 15 60 percent of you guys play to your strengths i promise you the team will do well against whatever opposition Absolutely. Ajay, mm. how do you nurture mm. a state of mind where your team works towards a collective good how do you build that confidence in teams in the corporate setup? I think what is very, very critical to us is that there has to be absolute clarity. The clarity of purpose. What happens is that if, if there are goals which are unclear or ambiguous, mm. that's where the whole challenge lies and the alignment of a personal objective versus organizational yes. objective. Yes. Talked the, a lot about that. The yeah. whole, uh, cl the, the thing is that if there is a vision, people will rally behind that vision. But where there is no vision, people perish. Not, not in literal terms, mm. but they lose the excitement. I mean, if you, if you take functions, there, there are varied functions in an organization, right, from top to bottom. Now, everyone has to have extreme clarity as to what they are supposed to deliver without fear. Now, that's, that's another thing which is very, very critical because if you are not going to put forward the best step, I'm sure somewhere the organization really suffers. Fearlessness. I want to hang on to that, fearlessness. How, how, you can't teach somebody to be fearless. Can we build fearlessness? Or how can fearlessness come into a team? Does that only come from success? You can teach fearlessness. Fearlessness comes with trusting your own instincts. If you trust your own strengths to the hilt, there's clarity of thought. Mm. There's no negativity. You know that there's no negative bone in your body. So when you get out there in the middle, your ability to express yourself is far greater than with a clouded mindset. Now, uh, building confidence and boosting morale, do you correlate them as the same thing or, or are they different? How do you look at these two? So I would look at confidence on, uh, as, as something which is perpetually inculcated and mm. supported by the leadership. Mm. True. Mm. And boosting morale could also be specific to the occasion. Right, it could be that you know you're behind budgets. How do you ensure that you know you you prop up with the inputs and sites to you know reach uh, where you wanted to reach, and that would require a different set of intervention. But how, as a leader, can you make sure you catch the signs of skillful, bright, great players or team members? The first thing I found as a coach was the guys weren't enjoying themselves. Not really enjoying themselves. There's too much baggage. So your job as a coach or a leader is to get rid of that bag and make them fly again. You're playing sport, you're playing in front of 100,000, 80,000. You're supposed to express yourself. You're not sitting behind a desk with a computer from 9 to 6. You know, get your buttons open, get out there and play the game. You know, and uh, express yourself. So, which means the baggage of you carrying too much burden can bring you down one step at a time and you know you'll see that you, the smile will come back onto your face and you'll start enjoying it more if you don't enjoy what you do mm. no matter what whatever you do in life absolutely now momentum and a couple of good wins under your belt and there's confidence right that's yeah. how it is in sport yeah. but 
is there such a thing as overconfidence? Oof. <laughs> Tell me. So then, of course, there's overconfidence. How do you prevent uh, your your people, your team from succumbing to overconfidence? I say one of the greatest qualities of a coach is to be a parrot. Mm. Means repeat the same things, and you know I want my boys to be sick and yar fir bol diya isne. Then again, he's told me that's a five thousand. Time is bloody told me. I said I'll bloody well tell it six thousand times mm. as long as I'm here too. That is, don't forget what's under your bloody nose. Mm. What is overconfidence? Is you forget all this suddenly when you're achieving something, you forget the ten yards here. Mm. You're looking there, hundred yards away. Are you? Uske baat kiya hai. Okay, you know you're building mountains in the sky. And that ain't there till you go through these ten yards properly. That's right. Yeah. So day in day out of ten. A reminder that that was yesterday. Mm. That's Tuesday. Coming up is Wednesday. Play and each Thursday. ball to its merit. Absolutely. That's what you have to do. Absolutely. How do you prevent from overconfidence taking over your team, individuals or teams? To me, honestly speaking, confidence is an outcome of something. Confidence is not something that you can have uh, in a seminar or pop in a pill and you will be confident, right? Mm. We we all know how much hard work. When Ravi hit. Uh, Six sixes to Tilak Raj, if I remember correctly. Because, I mean, I'm I'm sure you practiced hitting thousands of sixes before that. Oh yes, right. So that's competence. So after clarity, actually, I will say there are nine C's which lead to the ten C's. We talked about five confidence. today, but <laughs> let's hear your your nine C's. Okay, okay, my nine C's. The first one is clarity, as I mentioned. Yes. The first one, you have to be very clear. What is it that you want to be, do, or have in life? Sure. Second is competence. So. You got to be top five percent in your field. The third one is concentration. Today, the type of distractions that we all have. Mm. Can you sit together without looking at your notifications or mm. touching your mobile screen, even when there is no message? Mm. Mm. <laughs> concentration. Concentration. Fourth is common sense. Yeah. Action oh. without planning. Yeah. Brilliant. So many people brilliant. are lacking common sense. That's brilliant. No, no, no. Uh, they've forgotten common yeah. sense. Yeah. <laughs> Not lacking. They all have it. Yeah. But they're thinking too far yeah. ahead. An average person has a tremendous amount of common sense because they've not used it yet. Yeah. <laughs> Fifth is creativity. Again, if you do the same thing over and over again, you know, you get get results. Have to adapt, you know? change, improvise. Right. Uh, sixth I say is consideration. Finally, you're working with people and taking people along, being compassionate to people. Yes, there'll be good times, there'll be bad times, but that doesn't mean that you relinquish them in, you know, poor times. Yeah, consideration, compassion, both. Yeah. Part of this. Mm. Then is consistency. You yeah. know, if you practice the ten thousand hour rule, I mean, I'm sure every cricketer, every bowler, and so is true for every professional also. To be best in your field, you yeah. have to be consistent. Cons consistently doing and practicing what is best, upgrading your knowledge, attitude, skills. Right. right. The eighth is commitment. Totally. You got to be committed. Ravi said, Ravi said, if you're not good at what you're doing, you got to be committed to be good at pursuing that passion. Right. Sure. Sure. Right. Either someone is a bowler or a batsman or an all-rounder, but they have to work equally hard on whichever skills they are, you know, working. Fantastic. Ninth is uh, courage. Chanakya said that uh, action cures fear. So you got to take action in life, mm -hmm. and I think only people who take action really move ahead anywhere. When we practice this first nine C's over and over again, the end outcome is confidence. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Is that what uh, you have written down over there? Is that your? Uh, uh, yes, that, that's uh, that's uh, in fact, uh, Mandira, that's a model that I've created. Uh, Very nice. Knowledge, attitude, and skills, and these ten C's are a part of knowledge, attitude, and skills. Mm -hmm. And uh, I call it the AR for, for want of a better word, AR model for contextual success. I will get a nice. name one day. So, what is the starting point? Maybe the camera can zoom in on this. Yeah, is very nice. It is very good too. A person is not working in isolation. If if you look at the second one, Ravi, uh, in this one. Yeah, he's always. So good. there is knowledge, attitude, skills. He is at the center. But this knowledge attitude skill is is internal to a person. Now there are external reasons also which enable him to really the right environment, the hygiene factors, the motivators, mm. and that is what enables him to put in his extra efforts. Mm. And the more you put in efforts, you got to get result by by the law of accumulation. Of course, you got to get result. But if you don't try, well, <laughs> we all know. So we've talked about the nine C's leading to the ultimate C, which is confidence. A couple of you know you back your instincts. A couple of wins under your belt that will give you that momentum. Also, they'll give you the confidence. But there's more to be learned from 
failure than there is from Absolutely. success. Mm. Absolutely. So how do you get your people to, you know, uh, lift themselves up after failure and gain that confidence again? I think it's very, very important to tell them very early in life mm. is you must learn how to fail. Because if you don't learn how to fail, you will always fail how to learn. It is part and parcel which is something that every individual goes through. Mm. Some for a small period of time, some for a longer period of time. But you must remember, you will come out the better on the other side of it. No, but generally, um, okay, this is, this is before somebody has failed. But post somebody failing or post the team failing as a collective, post an individual failing, consistently over a couple of how do you how do you build a person up how do you instill that confidence again from that state you, you can tell yourself you can't become bad overnight okay you just mentioned that you were on a roll your confidence was high and then came the the, the fall dip, yeah so fall. It, so that was that is that is only temporary mm. you know the, in sport feeling defeated they say is a temporary condition yes giving up is what makes it permanent Ah. So we are not here to give up. We have tasted success. Then along the way comes failure. Remember your good moments and that and only that will bring you back. When you are in the dumps, any coach will say, think about the good moments. Never forgetting what you've achieved. You know, it helps you. Ajay, do you have steady. an AR system for lifting yeah, yourself yeah, yeah. out of, um, out of uh, you know, failure, uh, out of a dip? Can I enumerate a shloka from Bhagavad Gita? Yes. Because it's a way of life, not because of any religious connotation. So chapter 18, verse 13 and verse 14, I'll enumerate too. And if you can correlate it with this uh, failure uh, challenges as well. So uh, the verse uh, 13 says, Panchatani mahabaho karanani nibodhame sankhe kritante proktani siddhe sarv karmanam. Krishna says, Arjun, there are five elements that are responsible for everything that happens in your life as written in Sankhya, the book of karma. Mm. And the next shloka says, Adishthanam tatha karta, karanam cha prathak vidham, vividhash prathak cheshta, devam cha vatra panchamam. Adishthan means the approach or the basis of doing something has to be right. Mm. Karta is the doer. Yes. The knowledge, attitude and skills of the doer have to be perfect, then only you would be able to take right decisions. Karanam are the means used. So you have to have the means, you want to become a cricket player, but you know, it's, it's a challenge uh, reaching out to a sports field or a coach or getting a bat, you know. Mm. So means have to be there. Sure. And then comes cheshta or the effort. So yes. the basis of doing something has to be right. The doer has to be right. The means used have to be right. And the efforts put in have to be right. And that's when the fifth element, which is the divine providence, even the universe, God, whatever you might call it, has no option but to support you in your endeavor. Mm. I think we look at holistically when it comes to failure, because you know, you. Individual is just one of the pegs in the six elements that comprises failure. And therefore look at ki what went wrong, was the basis of doing something wrong or didn't we put in adequate efforts, adequate. Yeah. right? I'm sure you can correlate the same yeah, thing yeah, with, you know, yeah. success of any cricketer in yeah. the world. Yeah. Yeah. Introspect, yeah. Introspect. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, what a lovely note to end yeah. this, uh, you know, chat on, um, you know, on the note of confidence, on the note of positivity and, uh, you know, on the note of, you know, talking about the divine as well. Yes. Thank you, Ajay, for joining us. And thank you, Ravi, as always. Such pleasure. a pleasure to Mandira, talk to good you. To see you. so much okay. learning every time, you know, I talk to you. And today has been a lovely, lovely day of learning. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, Ranjira. Thank you very much, Ravi. With great power comes great responsibility. And how leaders choose to wield that power can make the difference for a great team and a powerful and growing company. Those were some very interesting insights shared by these dynamic leaders of today, building up brands, business, companies, teams, and leaders of tomorrow. I hope you've gained as much insight as I have listening to their words of wisdom. Thank you for joining us today.